So uh, we're testing out this little card called Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment. And you've heard of traditional ways to go to God, like meditation, prayer, going to church. This is a fun way. Uh, you're going to get a taste of, of uh, us watching movies and having deep metaphysics and great movies put together. So. This uh, is a website that has many, many movies and uh, classic movies, probably like you've seen Matrix and Truman Show and Groundhog Day and bunches of them. It also has an emotional index. So if you're looking through, let's say you're working through jealousy or envy or greed or something, you could go, you go on the site, you go find your emotion that you're working through that you haven't been able to pray away or meditate away working on forgiveness for years. This will help you pick the movie with the Holy Spirit and Jesus that will pop you through your most difficult emotions. So that's why I say it's a pathway to God, because it's very sophisticated, the online version. We also have uh, printed versions that people use, where they just rent the movies or they download them offline. But this is very sophisticated, this MW. Work. So the cards are going around if you want to do that. So, so when you choose uh, an, an emotion and choose a film, will the film be there too, or you have to buy that? Uh, or many that? times, many times the films are there, um, so, so you can actually watch the film with a setup like I'm doing tonight yeah. and commentary sometimes. During the film, it'll pause the film and have commentaries to set you up for certain scenes that are very important to be aware of, and then some discussion afterwards. Um, and there are some films that you may have to uh, have to rent it or download it. And I think we've got a clips section. Don't we have a clips section in there too? I think so. Those are movie clips. Um, we also have these things that are almost like synthetic movies, where instead of watching a full two-hour movie, uh, they're edited down just for teaching purposes, to help you really get uh, to the emotion in, in the fastest way. How this started was, uh, quite a few years ago, The Matrix came out. And then some of you remember it was the trilogy, so The Matrix, and the second Matrix, and the third Matrix. Well, at one point, a friend of mine, Jeffrey Lake, and I, we were praying and we were talking about wouldn't it be great if the Matrix could be condensed down for teaching purposes uh, from over six hour, hours of the trilogy down to uh, one very strong short movie. Mm -hmm. So we asked the Holy Spirit, Jesus, could you, could you remake the Matrix? We said the Wachowski brothers did a fantastic job, but could you remake it? And so Jesus said, sure. So he said, get the three movies, load them into a hard drive. We did. We weren't movie makers. We got some kind of editing program, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus, told us, literally did it through us, where we had scenes and dissolves and cuts. We even put in some of our own special effects <laughs> on top of the Wachowski brothers. And so our version was one hour and 23 minutes from over six hours, but it had all the things, the key maker and, you know, the or, you know, the oracle and the, uh, the architect and different things, but mostly it was taken from number one, because some of you have watched the trilogy, you know number one really has all the components there, and it just makes it a few others. So we have done this, um, I don't I suppose we have it with me, but, but I actually have a little composite 35 minute Star Trek movie that we call Time's End. Oh, I've just seen it. It's You've just seen it. It yeah. will blow your mind. People, I've sat down with people on this one and it is, it's like an LSD trip. I mean, when, they, when I get showing this movie, people don't believe that watching a movie can, can send you off into these kind of states of mind. But we've had, People spring into mystical experiences just from the movies, mm -hmm. without the ecstasy. That's right, without the ayahuasca. <laughs> you know, we're here in Holland, I know, I know. But 
I'm telling you, this is good stuff. This is the pure, pure stuff. Jesus is non-alcoholic, non-drunk, and he'll get you high. And I mean really high. And if, if he can make it last for a long time. Like, you Are you know, going to show that too uh, on this? What? Are you going to show that in this video? Well, we, if you have requested, remember it's your, your retreat. I mean, I mean, sometimes people say, well, I want Matrix Redux, so I show the Matrix Redux, or this time's end is only 35 minutes, but, but like on this system, um, they have me talking. I think it takes over two hours with all the commentary to do this 35 minute edited Star Trek version. But so, who here knows about Star Trek? Well, you know, with Star Trek, you know, it's to go where no man has gone before and, you know, explore the galaxies and so on and so forth. Well, <coughs> this particular episode, they actually go through a wormhole, and instead of encountering the, the Borg, the Klingons, the Romulans, you know, all the different species that are in the cosmos, they crack through in this wormhole, they crack through the veil of the cosmos, and they go right into the light, the abstract Christ light that's behind it. So they're not encountering another species, they go right into the light. And the light is just pure love and intelligence. But the fun thing about it is the light can't really, it doesn't really understand the human condition. You know, it's so perfect. But it, it basically goes into his memory, his consciousness, to pull out, you know, like his his wife and his son and all of his memories, so that it, the light can communicate through his memories of bodies and so forth to him in a way that he can understand and teach him that he doesn't understand anything at all. Because time and space are not understandable to the light. So that's why that movie will blow your mind. Because how many Star Trek episodes go into the light? And with Holy Spirit commentary, you know, it's absolutely spectacular. I mean, basically he's trying to teach the light about baseball. <laughs> and hypotheticals and all kinds of things. We, we think, ego thinks are exciting and interesting over, you know, in time and space. The light's not interesting. Basically, uh, it's tr he's trying to teach the light how exciting baseball is. That when the ball is pitched and the batter swings, the ball can go in any direction. And how exciting it is. And the light basically says uh, something like, um, something about ignorance. What is it? The number is? You value ignorance. You really value your ignorance. You, of what is to come. And in other words, we think, like if you go gambling, for example, it's exciting to not know when you pull the, the roulette or whatever, it's exciting. But he's basically saying, the light says, you really value your ignorance of what is to come. In other words, instead of being all know, omnipotent, om omnipresent, you value ignorance about the future. You know, the light's that wise, it just points out all the contradiction. Competition, you know, it's exciting in this world, the light's not interested at all. There's no competition in reality. So it's, it's very, very helpful in that sense. And even with relationships, it takes relationships like this movie will do tonight. Who was it here that said, when you, you ask for a holy relationship and it seems to slide into specialness? This is your movie. Your we got a winner right there in the corner. <laughs> it's like a bingo. You got the towels. B I N G O. I Christ. We got I Christ back in the corner. Okay. So what this is this movie is going to do tonight is it's I have never seen a movie like it. It's the first of its kind. And uh, who pulled it off? The Koreans. Yes, the Koreans made a movie unlike any relationship movie ever made in the history of humankind. Good for them. Good for us. Because basically, when we 
enter into relationships in this world, what you're really entering into is a version of the past. Because when you enter into a relationship with bodies, the bodies are the past. Remember lesson number seven from the Course, I see only the past? So that body, you could say the body that you think you are and the body that you're in relationship, is going to be an acting out, like a holographic acting out of your unresolved issues that you still believe are current. Even though they're, they're long gone, Jesus says they're overdone, they're completely gone. But you still believe they're there, and because you believe they're there, this partner is going to do you a favor and act them out for you. Act out whatever is unconscious vengeance, Whatever. Even if it's if it's a soulmate connection, you know, one day you wake up in bed and you you, you believe what? Or there'll be some trigger. You go know, like 348 consecutive days in bliss, and then boom! A button pusher. Why? Because it's the past. The past is still gonna come up. Because you still believe that there's something from the past that's still current. So these bodies are basically acting out. Now, what are they really acting out? They're acting out the judgments in the unconscious mind and the preferences. So that's why you're drawn more to some bodies than other bodies, and then you're repulsed by some bodies, and you're indifferent about many billions of bodies. Let's be honest with you. Are you really concerned about the billions? <laughs> Or are there a select few <laughs> that you have attractions to and repulsions to? You see? And then the rest of the close to seven billion, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, yeah, it's like bodies. But the ones that you are attracted to or repulsed by are the ones that, that are really going to be acting out those grievances. So you never really meet anybody in the present moment. In fact, Jesus even says that in the Course. He says, at no single instant does the body exist at all. Isn't that a fascinating con a line from Jesus? At no single instant does the body exist at all. It is always remembered or anticipated. Aha! We're back to the past and the future. So, if you remember anything of a body, you're remembering the past. And if you anticipate that romantic date night, that wedding night, you know, as they say, sometimes little girls will imagine their, their wedding days, just how they'll be for many, many years. If you're imagining the future or remembering the past, that's, that's where the body seems to come into play. It's always remembered or anticipated. So that's how the grievances work too. All grievances are, are remembered or anticipated. In the future, when we anticipate grievances, what do we call those? Worries. <laughs> and when, when we've had things that have already happened, and they're grievances, what do we call those? Regrets. <laughs> we have regrets and worries, you see. The body is, doesn't exist in any single instant. The body doesn't exist in the holy instant. It's always remembered or anticipated. So then you start to realize, if you get really deep into the Course, like, wow, I just got a time issue going on in my mind. I think I might have health issues, relationship issues, political struggles, issues around Mother Earth, and issues around pollution, interpersonal conflicts, and so on and so forth. But really, it's a time issue. And if you do the workbook of A Course in Miracles, you'll see that those early lessons, Jesus even says, we need to introduce some new time ideas for you. You see how he's, he's going to clear away all the old ego time ideas, and he's going to introduce new time ideas. Which is basically that your state of mind is a choice. That this instant you always have the choice over your state of mind. The world cannot dictate your state of mind. The world can never make you happy or sad. It's your mind, your consciousness is where the choice is going on.
And that's what we need to become aware of. If we're going to be miracle workers and we're going to be spreaders of love and light and joy, we have to clear away those unconscious time ideas and all the other beliefs that are stacked on top. And then from a pristine, clear, open mind, that's the last characteristic of a teacher of God, is open-mindedness, then that way we can be full miracle workers and eventually just disappear into the holy instant, and which is our gateway back to eternity. Now the movie tonight, why is this movie different than a lot of movies on relationships? Is because in most relationship movies you have, uh, the bodies appear to be fairly stable. I mean, if, if there's a relationship between a man and a woman, and the movie is a relationship movie, usually the man stays a man and the woman stays a woman. Nowadays, not always. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> that was back in the old John Wayne <laughs> day, but I'm just giving that as an example. Gregory you know. Peck. Yeah, it's, a man was a man, a woman was a woman. Now, you know, I don't know if I can say that. But, but even, even those movies, if a, if a man changes or a woman changes, there's, that's pretty much the plot line, you know, that's part of the plot line. But in this movie, the form changes pretty much every day. Every single day. And I mean not slight changes, like a little beard or a little bit of different hairstyle, this and that. Because we see people dress differently, and you know, bodies look a little different in our movies. But I mean, the, this, the age, the sex, the everything. I mean, it's... So imagine trying to have a relationship. If your, if your body was changing every single day, I mean completely changing, not just adjusting, but changing. If we, somebody might say, well, it'd be hard to recognize you. It's <laughs> like, how do you know <laughs> if it's you? <laughs> and that's something that comes up in the movie, you know, because it's, there's so much change. And then, this movie, though, goes for the home run. It's like, if you had a body that changed that much, could you fall in love <laughs> with a body that changed every day? Wow. <laughs> it's a book from an American young, American young author, isn't it? I don't know. I know. I've just seen the movie. I don't know. Okay. I don't know all the back. Maybe so. Maybe so. But the Koreans came up, they made it. They made the movie. So, to me, this is a really good movie because what does it do for all of us? Wow, it gives us a mind watcher. <laughs> you know, I do have a, a movie in. Uh, in my collection, in my movie watchers collection, <laughs> from years ago, remember Amanda and the <laughs> Alien? It was a, it was a story of a young, very open-minded young American woman, and this alien comes, and basically, it keeps, it kind of consumes or eats, uh, and then it turns into a different form. So she basically has got a lot of different. Um, forms uh, that this character, that this alien takes. So that kind of was a, a step in this direction, but not every day. This thing takes it every single day to a change of form. And could you fall in love? Could you go to the essence of that's there beyond the form? And A Course in Miracles is teaching us, yes you can. You can do that. You can practice in this world, with all the changing forms, with all the expectations. I mean, think about it. That's what we face with every day. Look at all the images. With the Industrial Revolution and advertising, we just have had an explosion in images. You know, it's not quite the same as it was in 1200 or 1600 or 1800. There's an explosion of images. And now with tablets, smartphones, huge high definition televisions and everything, you know, when you typically turn on a television station, you get bombarded with images. Now, there are some people like maybe the 
the Amish or something that might say, this is not good. <laughs> Unplug from electricity, do not have a television. But basically what the Course is saying is we can practice with the Holy Spirit with anything the ego throws at us. So it can actually be like mind watchers. You can actually use movies as mind watchers. Maybe they don't have any overt um, metaphysical content that you know of, but you could, you could do it by watching the news, or sports, or the Olympics, or, or pretty much any movie, and just watching your emotions. So in the early days of my teachings, Jesus had me actually make like little worksheets of like two, three, four, where I would take course quotes and I would use them to help people set their mind up to watch a, a mind-watching movie. Like something like with Boris Karloff, or something, you know, a horror movie. Something, any movie you typically wouldn't watch. But just to let all the fear come up, and then have these course ideas and principles start to help you get in touch with, oh, I'm generating the fear. The, the movie isn't a horror movie. The horror is coming from my consciousness, and it's projected onto the movie. That's lesson number two in the Course. I have given everything I see, all the meaning it has for me. So this is how Jesus started working with me, after I'd been in the Course for some time, he would take me to the movies, he would take me to a video store, or to the movies, and he would have me rent movies, and it was amazing lessons, because he would do like the inner processing work with me, of helping me get in touch with the unconscious mind through the movies, and through music as well. I was very emotional when I would listen to certain pieces of music, so that would be another way. And that's our biggest block to being spectacular miracle workers, as Pierre has said, is we have an unconscious mind that's dictating our lives on the surface. Our human lives are like robotic. We're just acting out a lot of unconscious beliefs. Jesus actually says in the Course, a, a belief, uh, no, it's not a belief, a, um, Decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. So we think, oh, I've got, I'm a human being, I have free choice, I have free will as a human being. Mm -hmm. All the decisions we make, decisions for our, our houses, our clothes, our partners, all the things in the images, are all just based on our unconscious preferences and assumptions. So we're watching a motion picture every day of our unconscious beliefs. And Jesus is determined to free us from this imprisonment, so that we actually can choose the atonement and spring back into eternity, instead of being just locked in to these time-space beliefs. So it's, it's an illusion to think that as a human being has free choice, because the choices are dictated by the beliefs. And then, you might say that once you start to free your mind of these unconscious beliefs, that you can, you can consciously choose things that don't seem to be conscious choices to most human beings. For example, um, some of you have heard of Paramahansa Yogananda mm -hmm. from India. He was an amazing realized teacher from India who went to America. He spent some time in Mexico and he spent a lot of his time in America and basically founded Self-Realization Fellowship. And he was so fully realized that when he came down to his final scenes of his movie, script in this world, his life in this world. And he sat there with his, he gave a talk out in California, and he sat there with his apostles, and he said basically, it's been great knowing you, but it's time for me to go. And he checked out right in front of him. He, he literally chose, with the Holy Spirit we could say, you always make those decisions with the Holy Spirit, fully in awareness, he chose to exit. And just like with Jesus, who 
rose from the dead after his time in the tomb, Paramahansa, Yogananda's body did not decay for weeks. It just stayed in a state of complete non-decay, which was another symbol of the enlightened mind. It was just another symbol he was leaving behind for the world and for the apostles. So literally, it's the same for all of us. We literally, at some place deep in our mind, we even choose how the body dies and when the body dies. So there are no accidental deaths. Everything is a choice. But remember, everything is a choice based on what you believe. So the purpose is to uncover your unconscious beliefs so that you can be fully conscious and then even the point of exiting this dream in this world is a choice that you make with the Holy Spirit. Now doesn't that sound empowering? <laughs> Instead of the grim reaper coming along someday and <laughs> to take you out, you know, no, no, I'm sorry, Grim Reaper, not today. <laughs> Holy Spirit and I have not finished our work. You know, you see how different, it's very empowering that you can do that. So, so this movie, again, I would say is really good for all of us because we'll just watch as the main character goes through all these changes in form. And um, you'll see in the movie, he he sees someone that he feels he's very drawn to. That's what a relationship is. It's an opportunity to fall in love in the truest sense. To go deep within, beyond the form, to the essence. To that communion experience I was talking about earlier. Where there's a sense of total communion and telepathy. Beyond the form. So, here we go. Are you ready? Yes. Our first movie <laughs> of the retreat. <laughs> has subtitles. So this <laughs> English subtitles. So we'll we'll see. We want to hear from everybody that you can read these as subtitles. So if you can from the back row, then we might have to move the projector up or do something. Uh, because we're we're basically using the whole wall, so we can we can make this make the picture bigger if you can't see the subtitles in the back. Okay. It's almost like going through reincarnation, just rocket fast. You're, you're a man, you're a woman, you're a child, you're young, you're old. It's really compresses it. You know, it's this whole time space, and you get a good feel for. But it is, but you don't have the amnesia. You, you, you have it day after day, so you can kind of try it on. You know? How does it feel to be a woman? Okay. What about a child? What about a man? You know, and then also the, the way that people react to you, you get to observe all that as well. Instead of being kind of skin locked for years and decades, you know, you can try it on. You probably, it speeds up the learning. It's like the fast version of reincarnation. But this is what Wo Jin is underneath uh, all of this. I'm recognizing you. See, that's why you love me, Mom. You come home, you still got one slipper off, she goes, ha ha, it's you. But it doesn't matter what you look like. That's beautiful. That's his first recognition. He likes that she always treats him the same. And that's beautiful. That's that's very Christ-like. Treat everybody with the same friendliness. You know, so he's drawn to that. He's drawn to how she looks. He's he's keeps going back and going back. And all of us have been through that experience where we're drawn to somebody. Maybe we like the way they talk. Maybe we like their values. Maybe we like the way they look. Maybe there's even something deeper that there feels like there's some kind of deep connection there and we want to keep coming back and pursuing that to discover something. But behind all of those things, which we could even call kind of attractions, whether they're physical or mental or even psychic or soul attractions, what is it that draws us into what we would call in this world a relationship. 
What is it underneath that we are searching for? Because tonight we can unravel the whole mysteries of the whole universe. You know, we brought up the relationship thing, let's just solve it all in one night. Yeah, let's just go for it. You know, why, why this heartache stuff? You know, let's, let's bring an end to this suffering right now. What is it underneath that we're drawn to and that we're looking for? Because if we can get at that, that will really help us. We're looking for what? A memory? Oneness. oneness. We're looking for oneness. And, and isn't that natural to look for oneness? Because if God created us in perfect oneness, and we've somehow forgotten that, or we've gone wandering in a lost place, where it's like a lost soul looking for that oneness. We're looking for that love. And another way we could think of it is we're looking for continuity. That's what we want. Because what? In heaven, it's love continuously. It's, it's continuity. Eternity. So we're looking for a taste. We're looking for our way back to that eternity. And we're looking for a taste of it. And that's why it's so important when we talk about relationships like have you been dating? How long have you been seeing him or her? Or even when we talk about partnerships or marriage, how long have you been married? That seems to be a criteria that seems to be important for some. <laughs> but it's this continuity again. We're looking for continuity. And so this movie can really help us out to solve this riddle tonight, because after we watch the movie and we go really into this movie, I'm going to get it back on the stage and we're going to go into this really deeply, because it's not that what we're searching for is wrong, but it's just where we think we're going to find that continuity is the big question, because that's what makes the human conditions so difficult. Like the country zone, looking for love and too many faces, looking for love in all the wrong places. That's the key. Where we do want that continuity, but I will tell you where it comes from. And, and so we'll go into that in much greater detail. Because as soon as you start to zoom in on where you can actually access that continuity, you're home free. You're going to be having amazing relationships, but it's going to be in a much broader context than you ever thought before, because this continuity is is the key. So right now it's kind of it's kind of cute because he's he's drawn to her and he's she even uh, uses the catalog that has his furniture in it, <laughs> which is you like that too. You know she's not playing by the books. She's not even trying to sell her own company's furniture. She's she's selling his furniture too. All the groaning. <laughs> I thought you were the advanced group. Dream dies. <laughs> oh, see, now you see how you can get up into this. But let's go, don't forget, you're going for the continuity. And, and where are you going to find continuity in so much change of form? You know, even if it goes two or three days, you know, you can get all butterfly fluttery, but then, you know, it's, the, it's Time. This is what time is about. You see how <laughs> radical the idea is, and yet she's just starting to open to it. And that's what the Holy Spirit has to do with our mind. It has to introduce us to a whole new way of looking at relationships and the world. 
and knows that we probably will initially resist it. And that's why in A Course in Miracles it says, there are many answers you have received but have not heard. <coughs> it's too radical. So the sleeping mind doesn't want to hear. It doesn't, it doesn't want to transfer the teachings to certain aspects of the world. So that's why the mind blocks hearing the Holy Spirit. Because the ego is terrified of losing its sense of existence, even though it doesn't have a real existence. It's afraid of losing the familiar. Because it's grown accustomed to its invention, which is separation, and now light and love seem to be the danger. Eternal life is danger now, because everything is flipped around and reversed. So it's great to watch her here because at first she says, I, I don't want to see you again, and yet then she starts exploring the idea of transformation. You think the idea of transformation in humans is possible. Because there's something in there that, that, is, that does want to go beyond its own levels of limits and fear. So it's happening. It's a transforming feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, make You could burn through motherhood and parenthood too with this whole thing. Yeah. You see, it transfers. It has many different transfers. Because it's all just images. But you see all the images are overlaid with meaning of the ego, and that's where the, the conflict comes in. It's 
says, two minds with one intent become so strong that what they will becomes the will of God. With one intent. Another part of the Course, he says, only a single purpose can stabilize events and give them stable meaning. Only a single purpose. So, without that single purpose, then it just seems to be a hodgepodge of images that seem to be chaotic and meaningless. But with that single purpose, all events become stabilized. So if anybody ever asks you, you know, how could you possibly have a happy life in relationship to planet Earth, which seems an absolute impossibility, except with a unified purpose that unifies your perception and shows you from the shows you the world from a completely different perspective. It's called in quantum physics. It's called the unified field. Everything is completely connected. They've already discovered it in quantum physics. But the interesting part now is how do you go from human perception into the quantum field? That's the adventure. And I would say that as you're drawn together by the spirit, by your intuition, you know, you will be drawn to places, people, books, things that are inevitably taking you back to that connection. It's, it's at work always. It's at work right now. And if you don't look for the continuity in the places and the people and the relationships, and you begin to just follow your heart and really feel what really resonates for you, moment by moment, that's the fastest way to go into this experience. We've all had those experiences where we find some kind of a, a connection, a vibrational connection, where we seem to hit it off, or there seems to be things that just come together so easily, and everything just has a flow, an easy flow. And then usually the thought is, wow, that was great. I wish life could be like that. In fact, if you go back to the 60s, go with the flow, was like a popular phrase. And that's really what we're looking at now, that's how practical this is. So for me, I remember talking to some people about the last uh, 20, 30 years of my life, and at one point, People were saying, well, yeah, it sounds like you had a very interesting journey there, but, but look at all that you missed out on. And I don't feel that I've missed out on anything. When you give yourself over to this purpose, you start to realize that what you pursued before, in egoic terms, that was the, the missing out. And the yielding in to this calling, this purpose that we're so interested in, that's why we're all here, that's the answer. That's the answer to boredom. That's the answer to fear. That's the answer to depression, worry, anxiety, stress. It's like there's really just one answer, and we have to just really decide that we're going to go for it, and desire it. To make it the top priority, that's all we do. Among other things, this is very practical. It's, it's just you start to give it ascendance in your mind. You make it the top priority. You give yourself over to it. You're not going to get locked up in rituals. You're not going to get caught up in all kinds of future goals. You know, is it really that important to have so many future goals? when you can start to see that there's a present goal that's more important than all the future 
goals. Does it make sense? No, of course it's not going to make sense to the world. Can you explain this to people? No, it's not <laughs> explainable. But there's something inside of you that knows it's true. You shall know them by their fruits. And they shall know themselves by these fruits. You know, it's the fruits of the Spirit that have always been our, our witnesses to it. Just coming to that simple happiness. So I think, just as an open movie, that was a masterful <laughs> movie. And even watching this movie, I couldn't help but think of a lot of other uh, movies from the Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment that are related movies. How many in here have seen uh, the movie Her? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a, I see not many, so I, I think that will be another one for us to watch. Because okay. mm -hmm. that is is transcending relationships again in the most masterful way. Another Scarlett Johansson movie. She's the voice of her mm -hmm. in that one. How many of you saw Lucy? Yeah, that was quite a rapid transformation movie. Yeah, there's a lot of them now that are taking us higher and higher. And uh, yeah, this, you know, it seems like the, the, the girl, the main character in this movie, she started to get sick because there was so much change. And she thought she was going crazy because she could remember all these memories and all this happiness, but she couldn't remember the face. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. thought she was losing her mind. And, and uh, yeah, it's a similar thing in her, where it's, an operating system that he starts to fall in love with, but but in this movie too, it's it starts to transfer beyond exclusivity, and that's what the world, the ego, has made of a world in which love and exclusivity are the same, and yet we're starting. We know it's called special love in in the course. But we're starting to see that love and inclusivity are the same. Agape love, unconditional love, love without limits, that those are the same. So you can start to see that this world is very distorted and backwards and upside down and, and we need to be taken into an experience of inclusiveness. And that is, is antithetical to the ego. The ego will do everything in its power, its seeming power, to fight and kick and defend against that inclusivity. Because the ego perceives inclusivity as death. <laughs> so, while you are being returned to eternal life, the ego says you're dying. <laughs> you're, you're not going to be able to handle the transformation. But of course, it's inevitable, so it's, it's really <coughs> comes back to R.A.S. I can't fight this feeling anymore. I've forgotten what I started fighting for. It's time to bring this ship into the shore and throw away the oars forever. You know, it, it's there in all of our music. It's just reminding us, reminding us that we've been fighting against eternal love. Afraid that eternity is going to kill us. But it's all flipped around. All of our fears, all of our defenses have been against nothing. So what did everyone think about that one? <laughs> Here's our microphone. Mm -hmm. Everyone's speechless. Let's dream about it. Let's dream about it. Let's put that in the percolator tonight and, and dream about it.
Well, it reminded me actually of something. <laughs> <laughs> then, even though in the movie it's all different people, so you can say it's different forms of the ego, <coughs> when you are in a love relationship with one person, it is also all the time, like I heard this once in a talk that Ramla said about you can connect from the person or you can connect from the soul. And then when you connect from the soul, it's like, hey, and he, he says it's very funny, like, hey, are you in there? Yeah, how did you get into that one? <laughs> like the body, you know? And actually, when you are then in a love relationship with someone, it is all the time knocking on the door and, and checking in with that soul. Because in one person, the ego has all these different faces, mm -hmm. like in all the faces in the movie. So it reminded me of that. That even if you are with one person, you still have to always kind of connect with that that other thing, that other feeling, that, that, that softness. really kind of interesting that it's like a, it's even just an illusion of, um, of, of continuity or stability that, that that relationship seems to offer, as there are many teachers like Deepak and everything that talk about how the cells are being regenerated and you know, you're, it's constantly, you're, it's like an image that's just being regenerated, but it's just happening so slowly. <laughs> that it seems like there's something there, but there's really, really not. And that's also kind of fascinating because it was, I don't know when it was, a few years ago when I came over and that they were so excited about the discovery of the Higgs boson particle over here at, in Switzerland, at the, the particle accelerator and everything that that they found the Higgs boson particle that is present everywhere in the universe. This particle is present everywhere, everywhere in the universe. And so they called it the God particle because it's present anywhere in the universe. Of course, from the course we know that God didn't create the universe, <laughs> so it kind of blows the whole one out. But I said, well, it's good. even Europe discovered the ego particle. He's <laughs> called it the God particle. You got such an issue with the word God that you called it the God particle. You named the, the and the, what's the one characteristic of Higgs boson? Well Einstein discovered that that actually as we all know for E equals MC squared, but Einstein discovered that everything in the universe is moving at the speed of light. But there's a particle that creates the or has the illusion of slowing down light to what we would call the material universe. It's Higgs boson. <laughs> it's the, the God particle is, is actually the ego symbolically is slowing it down to give us the illusion of matter. Most things being solid. Mm -hmm. But everything's actually moving at the speed of light. So that's just another really great metaphor when you really look at it. I spent a whole tour going around talking about that one when they discovered it. But that's the whole point. We, light, divine light is just expansive. It's, it's what we call wisdom. It's divine intelligence. Yeah, it's not, has no limits, and yet to try to identify with the parts, the particulars, that's where the, the error comes in, is the identification with the parts, any part. So Shakespeare almost had it, he said, all the world's a stage and everyone must play their part. I did ask Jesus about that. He quite, he, he just a little bit rephrased it, just a little bit, to give it accuracy. Which he does with the Bible quite a lot. All the world's a stage, 
and divine mind can play no part. That you can't be the whole and the part. And, and the whole, we've heard, is greater than the sum of the parts. The whole is real. The parts are not. So that's where this is all leading to first a holistic perception of the world, first to the quantum field, and then beyond, beyond the quantum field. And it's actually very practical. That's the, that's the fun part, you know, when you listen to the scientists and you start to get into this stuff, it's, it's amazing. But then, that's what we talked about here on day one, how do we experience this in a practical way? How do you experience this in terms of your experiences with planet Earth? Making it imminently practical in everything that you think and say and do. Giving your whole heart and soul over to this, like, wow, this is everything, this is so important. And in that sense, we're here to support each other in that. It's, it's enormous, it's huge, but it's, it requires a lot of nurture and nurturing and support. So that's what we're working on here. How can we be of help to each other? How can we assist in this journey? It's very important. We can find it out together, you know, we can pray, we can find it out. We can work it out, <laughs> we can work it out. <laughs> 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 We're being serendated. <laughs> okay, well this is our one late night. We, we actually will be shifting to a 7 o'clock. <laughs> Some are very alert. I may not be doing much sleeping tonight, but that's okay. Tomorrow we'll settle in. Thank you all. That was a fun evening.